All right, so uh, when we start talking about molecular ions, and I've got a sampling of molecular ions here that are uh, that are going to be ubiquitous. So these things are common in or are in all chemistry. Right? You have to know what these molecular ions are. And there's two ways to learn them. You can either memorize all the names, which I think is pointless, or you can learn how each one of these things is named. And if you learn it, then you'll never forget it. If you memorize it, you'll dump it out, and then you forget it for the final and go, oh, what are these things called? I can't remember. Why am I crying? That type of thing. Okay? So the first one that's over here is the one of two of the uh, positive ions that you have to know. Okay? NH4. What this is, Just like ammonia, except this time, this is ammonium, all right? Ammonium is a positive charge. And over here, this is water, but it's water with an extra hydrogen. It's got a plus charge on it. And this thing is called hydronium. Both of these ions are very important, okay? So you have to know what both of these things are called. Over here, OH minus, you may know what this is from high school. This is what we use, whenever we measure base, this is what we're going to be using. This is hydroxide. Okay, so sodium hydroxide. The molecular ion there is hydroxide. It's an IDE, uh, it's OH minus. For CO3, okay, this stuff is carbonate. Right, carbonate. If you've run into carbonate before, you maybe have used oxyclean and you read it on the label. Carbonate, sodium carbonate is one of the active ingredients of it. One that's a little bit more familiar to everybody, HCO3-1, what this stuff is bicarbonate. Bicarbonate is baking soda. Something that you use for cooking, Use it to deodorize your refrigerator with those little containers. Bicarbonate is a wonderful little material and it's really, really cheap and really, really amazing. Okay? So carbonate, bicarbonate. NO2 and NO3. Okay? These can't be called ides, right? Because ide indicates that it's some sort of element. Um, so notice that what I've got here are eights and ides. Okay? Um, we well, actually we, it's not ice it's ice nights will be coming up here in a second but we've used eight for carbon all right now when we get to nitrogen we're going to see two separate names associated with it no2 minus and no3 minus notice that the charge of both of these is the same okay and here this is going to be nitrite and this one is nit Okay, and the way to remember this is that with the more oxygens that you get, the one that's got more oxygens is the one that ate more oxygens. So this one ate more oxygens, it's NO3. This one didn't, so it's just ITE. Okay, so if I look at the SO2 and the SO3 over there, what would you guess their names are? The root is going to be based off of sulfur, so I'll put sulf on both of these. Sulf. Okay, which one is sulfite and which one is sulfate? That's right, sulfate, sulfite, good. All right, so it's just like what we saw with uh, common names of iron, where you have ferric and ferrous, okay? And over here you've got sulfite and sulfate, okay? So... Uh, these are the uh, the basics that we that we run into here. Um, when we run into things that are oxo acids, things with other oxygens attached, they're going to get a little bit more uh, complicated. But I do want to show you something. All right, notice that on the periodic table, we've got phosphorus right below nitrogen. Okay, so if I've got PO two or PO three and PO4, both of these are the common ions, right? What is going to be the overall charge of the phosphorus and the oxygen? 
Both of these turn out to be minus 3. Okay, their charge is the same. If you look at phosphorus, that's on the periodic table, phosphorus itself is also going to be minus 3 when it makes phosphide. Nitrogen and carbon don't follow those rules, but everything else does. If you look at sulfur, when you look at sulfur, sulfur is a minus 2, it's a sulfide. Okay, their charges are all the same. Okay, so for phosphorus, they're all the same. So what's going to be the name of PO3 and what's going to be the name of PO4? Which one do you think is phosphate? Yeah, you got that right. This one is phosphate, and this one over here is phosphite. Good. All right, beginning to see how the patterns evolve here? Okay, good. So let me do this. I'll erase my carbon, my bicarb here. So let me write this in, okay? And I want you to tell me which is which and what the charge is. So, let's do this one. Um, all right. ASO3, okay? Now what I want you to do is I want you to look at the periodic table and I want you to look in the column where you find arsenic, uh, arsenic there, that's AS, okay? So find that and look what else is in the column and try to guess what our charge and name of this is going to be. Okay? Now if you came up and noticed that this is in the same column as phosphorus and you thought, well, if it follows pattern, it's minus three and I can call this thing not phosphite, but arsenite, you're right, okay? That's arsenite. If I give you arsenate, what is that molecular ion going to be? ASO4 minus 3. Very good, okay? What about this one? What if I say, what is the formula in charge of telluride. What's that one going to be? Telluride is Te. And if you look on the periodic table, it's right beneath sulfur. So telluride, if you guess TeO3, that's right. What do you think the charge is going to be? Minus 2. Very good. All right, we're beginning to see how these patterns evolve on the periodic table. Okay, so that works for that, but now let me show you what happens when I just don't have a pair, but I've got multiples uh, as far as charges, as far as oxygens attached to something go. Alright, so here's some molecular formulas. All of these are ions. And I want you to look at this, and I want you to guess what do you think the uh, charge on all of these is going to be. Look back in your notes and see what it was for sulfur and what it was for phosphorus, and that will give you a general idea of what the charge is going to be. If you think it's minus one, you're right. So each one of these has a minus charge associated with it. Okay? And this is chlorine, and chlorine's got these weird properties associated with it, and the fact that it can make these bonds to, uh, there's a lot of bonds to oxygen. Okay, so what do you think? The names of these is going to be. Ah, there's the question. <clears throat> now, I want you to think and you say, well, I'm expecting something to be an, uh, an ite and something to be an eight. So I'm guessing, with, like, one of these is going to be the age, one of these is going to be the ite. And if you guessed that, good for you, all right? Because you're right. This guy here is chloride. And this one over here is chlorate. Okay. Now what are the other ones going to be? Well, the other ones are going to be a little bit of a difference, so they have to be. Right? And if you think about something that's a, that's a prefix that means under, you think about hypodermic needles, that's what we've got here. This one is hypochlorite. Okay? 
If you've done any pool maintenance or if you've done laundry and looked at the ingredients of what bleach is, bleach is sodium hypochlorite. It's this stuff. You pour into a pool. Right? This one down here is perchlorate. Okay? That's perchlorate. So if I did something similar, suppose I grabbed these and I said, tell me what the formula of bromate is going to be. What's bromate? If you think that it's BRO3, you're correct. And what would be the charge on BRO3? It's a minus one. Good. What about hypoiodite? Hypoiodite is IO minus. Good. All right. These all follow the same naming conventions. Okay. Please note that fluorine can't do anything like this. So if I say, what's the formula of fluorate? Don't give me FO3 minus. Because fluorine's in the second row and it can't do those types of things. This is why carbon and nitrogen don't follow the same rules as everything else that's down those columns. Don't do this. This is bad. Okay. That will be your grade on a test if you try to do that. There's no such thing as fluorate. Only fluoride. All right. Now, it's something important. What if I did this? And I put H's in front of each one of these. Added H to each one of these, and this is a hint as to where I'm going with this. If I put aqueous after each, where have you seen this before? Ah, uh, yes, when I was talking about acids. Okay? So if I put aqueous after each one of these, this means that these have become acids. Anytime I put an H in front of a molecular ion, I am indicating that an acid is involved here. Okay? So I look at these uh, ions, and each one of these is now um, an acid. So when this happens, there's two things that happen. If I've got an ite, ites become us, okay? And then the eights become x. Remember that ick and us from other uh, nomenclature? All right, so what this is, is that this has become now hypochlorous acid. Notice it's hypochlorous, not hydrochloric acid. Okay? I don't put the hydro in front of it. Okay? Hydro is reserved for binary acids. Hydrochloric, hydrobromic, hydroiodic acid. So this one, okay, or chloride, this is just chlorous acid. Okay? I forgot an O up here, sorry. Spelled that wrong. Okay, chlorous acid, all right? This one becomes chloric acid. And this one down here is going to become perchloric acid. And perchloric acid is one of these acids that we call super acids. And it's an acid that we can't use without being in a specialized hood because the vapors of this may peroxides and tend to start fires and explosions. Fun stuff, right? The same type of naming conventions happen with other elements as well. So if I have SO3, H2SO3, H2SO4, both of these aqueous, H2SO3 is going to become sulfurous acid, and H2SO4 becomes sulfuric acid. All right? If I put a G after it, it's a gas. It becomes hydrogen sulfate. All right? All right, quickly to finish up this section, there's some other ions that you're going to run into. You should know what the names are. This one up top, this one is oxalate. All right? This one is acetate. This one you run into in organic chemistry all the time. So know your acetates. Its acid form is acetic acid. Okay, oxalic acid, if I put two hydrogens here. Put a hydrogen here. Acetic acid. Okay, this is cyanide. This one over here is chromate. This is permanganate. And 
and this one over here is dichromate. Okay, know what these ones are. We're not going to run into them all that often. The ones you can expect to see on some sort of examination are these three. Okay, but these other ones come into importance when we start talking about oxidations. Okay.